Dear learners, today we are going to learn about the ring of real quaternions and rings of continuous functions. Let us start with an introduction of complex numbers. The complex numbers can be defined as ordered pairs of real numbers. C is equal to the set of a comma b such that a comma b in R and addition is defined as a comma b plus c comma d is equal to a plus c comma b plus d and multiplication is defined as a comma b into c comma d is equal to a c minus b d comma b c plus a d. Then c is filled with additive identity 0 comma 0 and multiplicative identity is 1 comma 0. The additive inverse of a comma b is minus a comma minus b and the multiplicative inverse of non-zero element a comma b is a by a square plus b square comma minus b by a square plus b square. Commonly, a comma b is denoted as a plus ib so that i is equal to 0 comma 1 and we notice that i square is equal to minus 1. In fact, this is the definition of complex field. The complex numbers are visualized as the complex plane where a plus ib in c is associated with a comma b in r2. During the early decades of the 19th century, the complex numbers became an accepted part of mathematics in large part due to the development of complex function theory by Augustine Cauchy. Since the complex numbers have an interpretation as a short of two-dimensional number system, a natural question to ask us, is there a three or higher dimensional number system? So, William Rowan Hamilton, his period is from 1805 to 1865, spent the years 1835 to 1843 trying to develop a three-dimensional number system based on triples of real numbers. He never succeeded. However, he did succeed in developing a four-dimensional number system now called the quaternions and denoted as H in his honor. The fundamental formula with the symbols I, J, K. I square is equal to J square is equal to K square is equal to I, J, K which is equal to minus 1. Then the equation governing arithmetic in this algebraic structure can still be seen on a plaque on the broom bridge of the Royal Canal. It was reported that Hamilton was so excited by his insight that he etched the equations in stone as he walked past the bridge. In Hamilton's own words, time is said to have only one dimension and space to have three dimensions. The mathematical quaternion partakes of both these elements in technical language, it may be said to be time plus space or space plus time and in this sense, it has or at least involves a reference to four dimensions. In fact, Hamilton's quaternions have many applications other than in physics. They are extensively used in computer graphics to describe motion in three space and more recently, they have been used in multiple antenna communication systems. In some ways, we can think of the quaternions as an extension of the complex numbers. Let us see the definition. The set of real quaternions denoted by H is defined by H is equal to the set of Q0 plus IQ1 plus JQ2 plus KQ3 such that QI belongs to R where i square is equal to j square is equal to k square is equal to i j k is equal to minus 1. Note that i j is equal to minus j i, i k is equal to minus k i, j k is equal to minus k j. So, multiplication in h is not commutative. For this reason, extra care has to be taken when performing arbitrary multiplications in H. Now, let us see addition and multiplication in H. We define addition and multiplication in H as addition is component wise 
as with addition of the complex numbers. So, if a is equal to a0 plus a1i plus a2j plus a3k and b is equal to b0 plus b1i plus b2j plus b3k or a pair of quaternions, then a plus b is equal to a0 plus b0 plus a1 plus b1 into i plus a2 plus b2 into j plus a3 plus b3 into k where addition of the real components a i plus b i is the usual addition in R. For example, if a is equal to 2 minus i plus 3 j plus k and b is equal to 3 plus 2 i minus j minus k, then a plus b is equal to 5 minus i minus 2 j. Now, we are adding this, that's all. It is not hard to see that this addition is well defined on H. That is, given pair of quaternions A comma B, that is uniquely determined quaternion A plus B, since addition is well defined on real numbers or. And note that addition in H is associative. It is easy to show that A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus C for all A comma B comma C in H. Using the fact that a i plus b i plus c i is equal to a i plus b i plus c i for all a i comma b i comma c i in R. H has an additive identity, namely the real number 0 is equal to 0 plus 0 i plus 0 j plus 0 k. Every element of H has an additive inverse. If a is equal to a naught plus a1i plus a2j plus a3k in H, then minus a is equal to minus a0 plus minus a1i plus minus a2j plus minus a3k is another quaternion as all elements of R have negatives in R and a minus a is equal to 0. Since addition is commutative in R, it is also commutative in H. Since a i plus b i is equal to b i plus a i for all a i b i in R. This all shows that the quaternions form an abelian group with respect to addition. Multiplication is a longer calculation. Essentially, when multiplying a pair of quaternions, a is equal to a naught plus i a 1 plus j a 2 plus k a 3 and b is equal to b0 plus b1i plus b2j plus b3k. We take all ordered products uv with u running over the terms of a and v running over the terms of b and use the relations i square is equal to j square is equal to k square is equal to ijk is equal to minus 1 and ij is equal to minus ji ik is equal to minus ki, jk is equal to minus kj. To get a final answer in the form, c is equal to c0 plus c1i plus c2j plus c3k. We compute the product ab as, ab is equal to, we are multiplying a and b, we are getting the answer as a0 b0 minus a1 b1 minus a2 b2 minus a3 b3 plus we will write the terms of i now is a0 b1 plus a1 b0 plus a2 b3 minus a3 b2. Now, we will write the terms of j is plus a0 b2 plus a2 b0 plus a1 b3 minus a3 b1. Now, we will write case plus a0 b3 plus a3 b0 plus a1 b2 minus a2 b1 into k. For example, if a is equal to 2 minus i plus 3j plus k and b is equal to 3 plus 2i minus j minus k, then a b is equal to 6 plus 2 plus 3 plus 1. Now, write the terms of i. 4 minus 3 minus 3 plus 1 and minus 2 minus 1 plus 9 
plus 2 into j plus minus 2 plus 1 minus 6 plus 3 into k is equal to 12 minus i plus 8j minus 4k. Again, multiplication is well defined in h since addition and multiplication are well defined in r. So, each pair a comma b in h determines a unique product a b in h which can be observed by looking at the coefficients of a0 bj0 plus a1 bj1 plus a2 bj2 plus a3 bj3 in r. It can also be shown that multiplication in h is associative which follows from the fact that the associative and distributive laws hold in r. H has a multiplicative identity namely the real number 1 is equal to 1 plus 0i plus 0j plus 0k. The left and right distributive laws hold in H which follows from the fact that the associative and distributive laws holds in R. Let us see the remark. The real quaternions form a initial ring which respect to addition and multiplication as the definition what we have seen. In fact, the ring of quaternions has another property. We can show that every element of H has a multiplicative inverse. Next, let us see the concept of norm of a quaternion and conjugate of quaternion. The definition of norm of quaternion is let Q is equal to Q0 plus IQ1 plus JQ2 plus KQ3 in H the norm of q is denoted by n of q and given by n of q is equal to q0 square plus q1 square plus q2 square plus q3 square. I repeat this, n of q is equal to q0 square plus q1 square plus q2 square plus q3 square. The norm of a quaternion is similar to the modulus of a complex number and plays a role like in the computation of an inverse element of a quaternion. Note that the norm of any quaternion is a non-negative real number and takes the value 0 only on 0. Next, definition of conjugate of quaternion is let q is equal to q0 plus iq1 plus jq2 plus kq3 in h. The conjugate of q is denoted by q bar and given by q bar is equal to q0 minus iq1 minus jq2 minus kq3. Now, let us see the relationship between q and its conjugate. Let q is equal to q0 plus iq1 plus jq2 plus kq3 in h. We note the following relationship between quaternion q and its conjugate. Q Q bar is equal to Q naught Q naught plus Q1 Q1 plus Q2 Q2 plus Q3 Q3 plus minus Q naught Q1 plus Q1 Q naught minus Q2 Q3 plus Q3 Q2 into I. Next we write the terms of J is plus minus Q naught Q2 plus Q2 Q naught minus Q1 Q3 plus Q3 Q1 into J. Now we will write the terms of k is minus q0 q3 plus q3 q0 minus q1 q2 plus q2 q1 into k is equal to q0 square plus q1 square plus q2 square plus q3 square which is nothing but n of q. Similarly, q bar q is equal to n of q. To summarize, we have that q into q bar is equal to q bar into q is equal to n of q in r. So, if q is not equal to 0, then n of q is not equal to 0 and hence we get the equation q into q bar by n of q is equal to q bar by n of q into q which is equal to 1. This tells us that the inverse of any non-zero quaternion Q is Q inverse is equal to Q into Q bar by N of Q. 
we have already seen that quaternions forms ring. Will it be a division ring? Yes, it forms a division ring. Let us prove it in this theorem. The theorem is the ring of real quaternions H is a division ring. Let us prove this. Tedious computations confirm that multiplication is associative and the distribution law holds. We now show that every non-zero elements of H has a multiplicative inverse. Consider Q is equal to A0 plus A1i plus A2j plus A3k. Define D is equal to A0 square plus A1 square plus A2 square plus A3 square which is not equal to 0. Notice that A0 plus A1i plus A2j plus A3k into A0 by D minus A1 by D into I minus A2 by D into J minus A3 by D into K which is equal to A0 into A0 by D minus A1 into minus A1 by D minus A2 into minus A2 by D minus A3 into minus A3 by D plus A0 into minus A1 by D plus A1 into A0 by D plus A2 into minus A3 by D minus A3 into minus A2 by D into I plus A0 into minus A2 by D plus A2 into A0 by D plus A3 into minus A1 by D minus A1 into minus A3 by D into J plus A0 into minus A3 by D plus A3 into A0 by D plus A1 into minus A2 by D minus A2 into minus A1 by D into K which is equal to A0 square plus A1 square plus A2 square plus A3 square by D which is equal to 1. So, a0 plus A1i plus A2j plus A3k, the whole inverse is equal to A0 by D minus A1 by D into i minus A2 by D into j minus A3 by D into k, where D is equal to A0 square plus A1 square plus A2 square plus A3 square. Therefore, every non-zero element of H is a unit and so the quaternions form a non-commutative division ring. Next we will see an example. See this example. Let Q is equal to 1 plus 2i plus 4j plus 8k. Then we compute Q square. Clearly N of Q is equal to 1 plus 4 plus 16 plus 64. Nothing but squares of all the coefficients is equal to 85. The Q bar is equal to 1 minus 2i minus 4j minus 8k. We are interchanging the symbols. It follows that Q inverse is equal to 1 by 85 minus i 2 by 85 minus j 4 by 85 minus k 8 by 85. Note that Q plus Q bar is equal to 2 in R. Compare this with the complex numbers. This gives the equation Q bar is equal to 2 minus Q which gives Q into Q bar is equal to N of Q is equal to 85 is equal to Q into 2 minus Q which is equal to 2 Q minus Q square. It follows that Q inverse is equal to 1 by 85 minus 2 by 85 into I minus 4 by 85 into j minus 8 by 85 into k. Note that q plus q bar is equal to 2 in r. Compare this with the complex numbers. This gives this equation. q bar is equal to 2 minus q which gives q into q bar is equal to n of q is equal to 85. q into 2 minus q is equal to 2q minus q square. So, it follows that Q square is equal to 2Q minus N of Q is equal to 
2 plus 4i plus 8j plus 16k minus 85. So, the answer is minus 83 plus 4i plus 8j plus 16k. We have just found another way to compute q square using the norm and conjugate of q. In fact, this type of manipulation can be used for any quaternion. The next theorem is, let q is equal to q0 plus q1i plus q2j plus q3k in h, then we are going to show that q square minus 2q0 q plus n of q is equal to 0. Let us prove this. Since q plus q bar is equal to 2q0, we find that q into q bar is equal to n of q is equal to q into 2q0 minus q is equal to 2q0 q minus q2. And the result is, the properties of conjugation in H are similar to those for C. Let us discuss the properties in this theorem. See this theorem. Let A comma B are in H, then the followings hold in H. The first one is, A plus B, the whole bar is equal to A bar plus B bar. The second one is, AB bar is equal to BA bar. The third one is, N of AB is equal to N of A into N of B. Let us prove this. Let A is equal to A0 plus IA1 plus JA2 plus KA3 and B is equal to B0 plus B1I plus B2J plus B3K. Part 1 is straightforward. To see the part 2 holds, note first that AB bar is equal to A0 B0 minus A1 B1 minus A2 B2 minus A3 B3 minus A0 B1 plus A1 B0 plus A2 B3 minus A3 B2 into I. Next we will the terms of J minus A0 B2 plus A2 B0 plus A1 B3 minus A3 B1 into J. We will write the terms of K now minus A0 B3 plus A3 B0 plus A1 B2 minus A2 B1 into K. Now compute B bar into A bar is equal to B0 A0 minus B1 A1 minus B2 A2 minus B3 A3 plus write the terms of I is minus B0 A1 minus B1 A0 plus B2 A3 minus B3 A2 into I plus minus B0 A2 minus B2 A0 plus B1 A3 minus B3 A1 into J. Now write the terms of K minus B0 A3 minus B3 A0 plus B1 A2 minus B2 A1 into K is equal to a0 B0 minus A1 B1 minus A2 B2 minus A3 B3 minus A0 B1 plus A1 B0 plus A2 B3 minus A3 B2 into I minus A0 B2 plus A2 B0 plus A1 B3 minus A3 B1 into J minus a0 B3 plus A3 B0 plus A1 B2 minus A2 B1 into K which is equal to AB bar. Part 3 has a more elegant proof. If we use part 2 and the fact that N of Q is equal to Q into Q bar. N of AB is equal to AB into AB bar. AB bar will be written as BA bar. So, it is equal to part 3 has a more elegant proof. If you use part 2 and the fact that n of q is equal to q into q bar. n of ab is equal to ab into ab bar. The ab bar will be written as the b bar a bar. So, ab into b bar into a bar. It is used the associative property here. So, a into b b bar into a bar. We know b b bar is equal to n of b. So, is equal to A into N of B into A bar. Now, we will use the commutative property. So, is equal to A into A bar into N of B. We have already known that A into A bar is equal to 
Yes, you are right. It's n of a. So, n of a b is equal to n of a into n of b. Let us see this example. Let a is equal to 2 minus i plus j minus k and b is equal to i plus j. Then we compute n of a power 5 and n of a b power 12. We know that n of a b is equal to n of a into n of b. We have to write the squares. So, it is equal to 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 into 1 plus 1 which is equal to 7 into 2 is equal to 14. Now, we find n of a b power 12 is equal to n of a into n of b power 12 is equal to n of a into n of b the whole power 12 is equal to 7 into 2 power 12 which is equal to 28,672. Suppose we wish to find a power 5, we can first use the equation. a square is equal to 4a minus n of a, which is equal to 8 in, which is equal to 8 minus 4i plus 4j minus 4k minus 7, is equal to 1 minus 4i plus 4j minus 4k. And then use the fact that a power 4 is equal to a square the whole square to find that a power 4 is equal to 2 a square minus n of a square is equal to 2 minus 8i plus 8j minus 8k minus 49 is equal to minus 47 minus 8i plus 8j minus 8k. Finally compute a power 5 is equal to a power 4 into a which is equal to minus 47 minus 8i plus 8j minus 8k and a is 2 minus i plus j minus k is equal to minus 118 plus 31i minus 31j plus 31k. Note that n of a power 5 is equal to n of a the whole power 5. 118 square plus 3 into 31 square is equal to 7 power 5 which is equal to 16,807. n of a is equal to 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 7. So, n of a the whole power 5 is equal to 7 power 5 which is equal to 16,807. One another quaternion is pure quaternion. A quaternion that has the form q1i plus q2j plus q3k is called pure quaternion. It is particularly convenient to compute powers of such quaternions like this. If pu is a pure quaternion, then q square is equal to minus n of q. So, q power 4 will be written as q square the whole square is equal to minus n of q the whole square is equal to n of q square. And in general, q square k is equal to minus 1 power k n of q power k. Note that every even power of a pure quaternion is real, while every odd power of a pure quaternion generates another pure quaternion. Q power 2k plus 1 is equal to, it will be written as Q power 2k into Q is equal to minus 1 power k n of Q power k into Q. Finally, let us discuss about the continuous functions. Let us verify whether it forms a ring or not. Rings of continuous functions. Let C of R be the function space consisting of all continuous functions from R into R. Then we say that C of R is ring of continuous function from R into R whenever C of R satisfies all the ring axioms with function, addition and multiplication. Consider the function f from r into r and c of r be set of all continuous functions r into r. For any f comma g in c of r and any x in r, we define the following operations. f plus g of x is equal to f of x plus g of x for all x in r. f dot g of x is equal to f of x dot g of x for all x in r. R. Now, we want to show that C of R is a ring under function addition and multiplication. 
for closure of addition since for any x in r f of x plus g of x in r f of x plus g of x is well defined and so f plus g of x in c of r likewise for closure of multiplication since for any x in r f of x dot g of x in r f of x dot g of x is well defined and so f dot g of x in c of r clearly ring axiom like commutative associative and distributive laws for addition and multiplication holds for c of r since real numbers hold such laws associativity for any x in r we have f plus g plus h of x is equal to f of x plus g of x plus h of x which is equal to f of x plus g of x plus h of x therefore f plus g plus h of x is equal to f plus g plus h of x f of x is equal to 0 for all x in r is the additive 0 in c of r f of x is equal to 1 for all x in r is the multiplicative unity in c of r Minus f of x is the additive inverse for f of x in c of r. Commutativity for any x in r, f plus g of x is equal to f of x plus g of x, which is equal to g of x plus f of x is equal to g plus f of x. Distributive for any x in r, we have f dot g plus h of x is equal to f of x dot g of x plus h of x. Is equal to f of x dot g of x plus f of x dot h of x. f dot g plus h of x is equal to f dot g of x plus f dot h of x. This is the first equation. Now see the next one. f plus g dot h of x is equal to f of x plus g of x dot h of x. Is equal to f of x plus g of x dot f of x plus h of x. f plus g dot h of x is equal to f plus g of x dot f plus h of x. This is the second equation. So therefore, the set of continuous functions C of four forms a ring. There are several related rings such as C one of four, the ring of differentiable functions. C not of four, the ring of continuous functions satisfying f of x tends to zero as x tends to plus or minus infinity. and the ring of continuous functions on the closed interval a comma b which is denoted as c of a comma b all these rings are commutative and all except c not of r have an identity the constant function with value 1 let us see the example here let i denotes an interval on the real line and let c of i denotes the set of continuous functions f from i to r then c of i can be given the structure of a commutative ring with identity by setting f plus g of x is equal to f of x plus g of x f dot g of x is equal to f of x dot g of x here zero of c i is a function with constant value zero and one of c i is a function with constant value one clearly All the ring axioms are hold in C of phi. Therefore, C of phi forms a ring. Okay, learners, we are in the conclusion part of this today's module. In this section, first we have seen about complex numbers, and we extended it to quaternions, and then we discussed norm and conjugate of quaternions with some examples. Moreover, we have seen pure quaternion with some example. Finally, we have seen about ring of continuous functions, and also we have seen it forms a ring with some example. I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you.